Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to look at two super easy ways to play and shift between seventh chords. This would in involve any seventh chord out there, major seventh, minor seventh, minor major seventh, minor seventh flat five, whatever it may be. These are two ways which continue to work for me during my recordings, my gigs and not because they are easy. They are also going to sound the best. They are going to sound the most smooth when you think about it, when you move from one to the other. And this might go a bit against your textbook methods of how to form seventh chords, you know. It might go against that a bit but it'll be easy to play and it's going to sound a lot better and another point before I start is you can use these methods or these voicing strategies to play your chords a lot more lower on the piano because if you play a seventh chord very low it sounds very muddy but there are some other ways of playing it like that so you can make it very clean very deep but access the lower regions of the piano. So a lot of reasons why this will help. It's not only because it's easy, it will be easy to play, but it will also sound way better in a recording or at a performance or if you're working in an ensemble, be it a choir or a band or any, any other activity which involves other instrumentalists and other sounds going on. And I'm also going to stress on the fact that it's not only easy to play, it's also easy to shift because a lot of the times when you play a chord, you'll say, okay, cool I'll play a seventh chord but then if you have to play the next seventh chord that is where the problem happens now you can probably play a D flat seventh as well or a D flat major seventh and in this case an A flat dominant seventh but then shifting between them is the challenge. So normally when you're given a seventh chord or any chord, you'll have a kind of a chart or you'll have a visual like an A flat seventh is A flat C, E flat, G flat. Now I guess it's fine to play that. The same thing on a guitar, you have a shape and you kind of somehow get by and you find that shape. But what if you have to go from there to the next chord? Now going to playing the next chord, let's say if you take the next chord being a D flat major 7. That's fine. I can play a D flat major 7. I can play an A flat on. But the journey between A flat 7 and D flat is actually the, the job of playing piano or guitar or any instrument because that is the tough part. The tough part is not actually playing the chord. The tough part is then changing the shape to play the next chord. So these two strategies are designed with the aim of shifting not only for just making the actual chord easy to play okay so before we get started it'll be nice if you can consider hitting that subscribe button turning on the bell for regular notifications and all of my handwritten notes will be available on our patreon and you also have a lot of interesting tires out there on patreon to choose from you can do workshops you can do private lessons with me and so on and so forth let's get cracking so if you take let's say the we'll be in the key of d doesn't have to be the scale of D. So let's look at all the seventh chords out there. This is a D major seventh or a major seventh. That's your root, major third, perfect fifth, major seventh. Then you have your minor seventh, root, minor third, same perfect fifth, dominant seventh or minor seventh. Then you could do what else? You can do D seventh, root, major third, perfect fifth, dominant seventh then you can have a minor major seven like a james bond chord root minor third perfect fifth my major seven so minor major seventh okay then you have your minor seven flat five or a half diminished chord that's your root minor third minor seventh tritone in the middle Okay, then you have other 7th chords like a 7 sus4 which is root sus4 or perfect 4th, perfect 5th, dominant 7th or the minor 7th on top. So the first way I have for you to make this playing a lot easier is to just remove a few notes. So if I have to play D major 7th and to get a proper vibe of the D major 7th sound, I can play a D in my bass. That's nice. On top, 
the voicing would be either you do 3 and then the 7 or else 7 and then the 3 of the chord. So, there we go. This will also allow you to play it a lot lower in the, in, in the piano. So, D major 7, so D major 3rd major. Now, you may argue where's the 5th. Now, I may argue back and say that the 5th is not so useful for the for giving you the flavor of a major 7 chord but you can play it down below so the voicing strategy could be 1, 5, 3 and 7 and you can also interchange the position of the 3 and the 7 you can bring the 7 down or move the whole thing up if you ask me this is a lot freer on your hands because both your hands are now taking up the responsibility, right? You can even arpeggiate this well if you're doing this only in the left hand, you know? As opposed to this is fine, standard, tried and tested but it's a lot more wider. It's already beyond an octave. Let's look at a dominant 7th chord now. It will be the same old story in the left. Root and 5th and in the right hand. What's going to happen is either 3-7. That's F sharp C. Remember it's 3-7 flat because it's a dominant 7th chord. Or you can do your 7-3. Uh, See how low I'm going. This is the second D of the piano. So still sounds very usable doesn't it so that's 7 flat C and then 3 normal 3 uh, F sharp so uh, what about minor 7 same story 1 5 7 3 or 3 7 now for a minor 7 flat 5 you could start with a minor 7 shape and then move your 5 down to a flat 5 or a tritone Okay, uh, what about what's left? Maybe a minor major seventh. I like that voicing. It brings out the augmented flavor of that chord. There we go. So this way, the chords sound a lot more usable. You can make out each voice almost like how it's designed in a choir or an orchestra setting. When a piano player plays chords like this, it's not necessarily what a choir would do or what an orchestra would do in the real world, you know. So this is a lot more real world. And you can make out the notes of each chord pretty well. Now let's look at how the shifting between chords can be made a lot more easier. Let's take a 2-5-1 progression in the key of D. The 2 would be E minor 7. The 5 would be A 7th. And the 1 would be D major 7th. So you can play with the same strategy E minor 7th. So I'll start off with A. 3-7 voicing and then I'm going to go to an A dominant that's A 7th and then D major 7th okay. and I can play it lower this also gives you the opportunity to go beyond the se seventh chords as well right you can add that uh, nine there we can play an a seventh with the sharp what's that the sharp five because i have a lot more fingers now to be usable as opposed to if i played it this way i can't add any more extensions so back to two five one again e minor seventh a dominant 7th, D major 7th. And now I'm voicing it with the 3 7. So why can't I now consider the 7 3? Now just to note, when I go from the 2 to the 5, I'm changing from the 7 3 shape to the 3 7 shape. 
So whenever you're going down the circle of fifths, which is my next topic, if you go two, five, and then one, it's going to be the voicing will keep getting flipped. Seven three, three seven, seven three. Repeat. Seven three, three seven, seven three. If I did the other one, that's three seven, seven three. Three seven. So there is a lot of economy of motion, as they say. There's barely any. It's just one finger, and see, this is consistent, and now that is consistent, right? There's very less movement of your fingers. In fact, a lot of fingers stay their ground. Very nice to groove as well because your hands are a lot more free as opposed to playing. Sounds a lot more cluttered, I feel. Versus another drill you could try and do is circle of fifths in clockwise motion. So if you start with and just do one kind of chord, the dominant seventh chord will work really well. So if you take the C seventh in seven three, then the F can be in three seven. Then B flat will be in the three seven. Reversing to E flat seventh, A flat, D flat, G flat or F sharp, B seventh, E seventh, A seventh, D seventh, G seventh, C. I'll do that again. C F B flat E flat A flat D flat F sharp B E A D G C. So that's all the dominant seventh chord. That's a good practice. So uh, that's the first way to shift well between seventh chords. In a nutshell, you play the one five in the in one hand, and you play the three seven in the other hand. So let's now consider the case where you have to play the full on seventh chord. You have to play D seventh like that, you know. And there there are cases where you might need to do that, you know. Now. The first challenge will be there are too many notes to remember, so let me try and simplify this for you in this method. So if I have to play D seventh or any seventh chord, always think of it as a triad plus something, triad plus something. So if I take D dominant seventh, what is D dominant seventh? It's D major plus the seventh. What is a dominant seventh? Now you think to yourself, all sevenths, a major seventh would be. An octave minus one, or the root minus one, minus one chromatic step. So if you take D, minus one will be C sharp. D minus two will be C. Okay. Now the question is, where is the C? You can find that C depending on your inversion. So if I play D major like this, and if my hand is somewhat in this shape, I have my thumb, so I can find a lower C. If I'm here. I can use my ring finger or the pinky finger to find well C. If I'm in an inversion like this, as you know, we might need to use inversions as well. Now I again ask myself, where is C? There we go. If I'm in the second inversion, I ask myself, where is C? And I ask, and I also give C a finger because now in this case, I can't bring, I can't play like this. That's ridiculous. So I'll have to play D with my middle and C with the free finger, which is the index finger. Okay, so that's one way to make this easier. And if you have to shift between seventh chords, let's take the case of going from uh, D seventh to G seventh. So think of it as two triads. So D seventh. To G seventh on a normal day, what will you do? You will play D seventh like D major like this, and G major like this. Correct. So on a normal day, these are just triads. But now we are trying to do sevenths. So let's say I was here, D seventh, G. So I just add the seventh note. See, that's a. I'm just adding that C to the party. And I'm now adding the F to the party, but without the C and F, it would continue to be so this is a very clean sound. That's the more spicy one. Okay. 
So even though this is the same voicing method like you would normally use, I think it's an easy way to visualize things. First start off with triads. Can you shift well enough or maybe you're here? Triads are done and dusted. Now bring in the seventh call. Okay, and of course the left hand can just play the roots. Okay, so that's another easy way to, I wouldn't say shift between the chords, but an easy way to at least remember this, the formation of the seventh chord. So think of it as a triad plus something. So a major seventh chord would be a major chord plus a major seventh. A minor seventh chord would be a minor chord plus a minor seventh. A dominant seventh chord would be a major chord plus a minor seventh. A minor seven flat five chord would be minor chord plus a major seventh. A minor seventh flat five chord would be a minor, a diminished chord with a flat seven. Diminished is your bass triad. Flat seven. You can even do diminished seventh chords, which is a diminished chord with a diminished seventh. Right, so a sort of bonus tip before we pack up this lesson would be if you have to play a seventh chord in only the left hand at a very low point or a very low octave or very low register, here's a strategy. You can use spread voicing. What is spread voicing? You can do one, five octave. 1 5 octave and more on this in the uh, we leave you a playlist on spread voicing where a lot of lessons are covered so if you take D major like this I'm not playing it like this I feel it's very muddy you don't you cannot make out the frequencies easily so 1 5 high 3 how do you convert this to a 7th chord whatever note is in the middle make that into a 7th that's D major, that's D seventh. D major seventh, D major seventh, major third. You can even add the sixth in there. So major, flat seven. Let's look at a minor option. That's your D minor seventh. Very nice for playing the left hand in a very low register, even lower than a bass guitar, you, you might imagine. But make the sound crystal clear, even though the, the frequency range is very low. So it's sort of similar to, let's say, the color spectrum. The dark colors are going to get very difficult to see very very with, with distinction, with your eyes. While the bright colors, there's a lot more distinction between, let's say, a blue and a green. While if you do really dark blue or really dark green, the contrast between them will be very, very minimal, at least for an eye like mine, which can't track colors so well. So it's the same issue with music. The lower the note is, the frequency range is going to be much more lower. For example, if you take this A at 440 hertz, the next one will be 880. So this to this would be a, a width or a gap, a frequency gap of 440 hertz. So that's a lot wider of a range to have all your other notes. So which is why melody, everything will be clear and more usable here. Now, here you just have about 220 to 440. So that's 220 hertz to play around with. So the notes are a lot more closer to each other. While here you just have 110 hertz and here you have just 55 hertz. Which is why in the bass region you need to be a lot more wider when you play your notes. And generally you don't play things together. Usually bass lines are done that way. Melody will generally be played higher and your chords are generally in the middle of the keyboard. Okay. 
if you play them too high then they start sounding too prominent and then the melody line will be uh, kind of washed away so to speak right guys so hope you found this lesson useful we'll be doing a lot more lessons on seventh chords on uh, some jazz standards as well and also how to extend the seventh chords to nines elevens and other intervals and and other movements so if you'd like to learn more about this try to type in the comments let us know what you prefer and do consider getting the handwritten notes for this lesson on our patreon page it's available in the description you can check out the link there are also a lot of related videos like like spread voicing and the other topics which you'll find in the description and if you'd like to learn from our school in a structured environment you can consider going to nathanielschool.com and reaching out to one of our course advisors thanks a ton for watching the lesson cheers